Hi guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we're talking all about interest rates and especially for those that have properties in their own name, basically what you can do about this, what you need to be worried about because quite frankly for a lot of people, because mortgage interest rates have gone so crazy, the tax side of this as well, the impact of section 24 are really hitting home and are having some pretty nasty consequences for a lot of landlords. Before we get into the video, please make sure you do give this video a thumbs up and make sure you hit that subscribe button with notifications turned on. So interest rates, unless you've been living under a rock um, or you've been in a coma, you've probably seen exactly how they've gone absolutely crazy at the minute as the Bank of England tries to curb inflation. Um, you know, at the minute it's 5%, down from 0.1% not so long ago. And there are rumors that it's, well not rumors, but kind of forecasts, um, the better word there, that it could go as high as six, maybe even 7%, because looking at the reports, inflation is still not being curbed. But of course there is the lead and lag side of this. You increase the interest rates, and then it's usually you know six months, 12 months, before you really see that go through into the inflationary figures. But at the minute it's 5%, there aren't really signs of slowing down. So a lot of landlords where you were previously locked in at really good interest rates, especially some landlords would buy to their properties in their own name. Wouldn't surprise me if some of you guys were paying one, two, three percent, very, very good rates, as was the case for the past decade. Actually now, those fixed term products might be coming up to expire, probably reverted to some kind of standard variable rate. And as a result, your mortgage payments have doubled, tripled, you know, we've even seen it quadruple in some cases. And of course, this has a massive impact on the tax side of things as well, because remember, it's these mortgage interest payments that aren't tax deductible. So not only could your mortgage interest payments have quadrupled or tripled, um, actually, you're not getting tax relief on that at your marginal rate, because of course, that's how Section 24 works. You only get a 20% tax credit for your mortgage interest expense, which a lot of people now will we, we see it's quite common in a lot of areas of the country that rents haven't increased anywhere near as much as mortgage interest rates have. You might even have tenants in place, so you can't even increase the rents, you're in that fixed, um, fixed tenancy. And what that means is you are losing money on some properties, even from a cash basis. And then when it comes to put your tax return in and you see that you're not getting tax relief at your full marginal rate for your interest payments, actually that really adds insult to injury and even furthers that cash loss. So for a lot of landlords where you are being pushed into that higher rate band because of the fact that you're not being able to deduct your mortgage interest expenses, it's absolutely crucial that you really look into this and do something about this today. Run the numbers, see what you can do. Because a lot of people, when you factor in, okay, you might look at it thinking, okay, it's just about covering the mortgage, um, the rent is basically just about covering the mortgage. If you're a higher rate tax buyer, by the time you take tax into it, you will be paying tax on that profit, which HMRC believe you have, even though you don't have it from a cash flow point of view. So you must look at the tax side of this to ensure that after paying your taxes, are you still making a profit? Because we're speaking to so many landlords on a daily basis who think that they're just about getting by by the skin of their teeth, but actually we speak to them and show them unfortunately, because of the way this section 24 works, they're actually losing money by keeping these properties. Of course, we're working with them to see how they can help sell their properties. If that's an option, a lot of them at the minute might be looking at even moving to a limited company. Of course, that's always an option or even put them on Airbnb short term lets. Because remember where you run that property, a service accommodation, Airbnb, furnished holiday lets, you can deduct all of your mortgage interest in full as a tax deductible expense still. So it's a, it can be a mix of these which suits you and your businesses, of course, depending on where located in the country. But the most important thing is you actually stop, pause and think about it rather than just kind of avoiding the problem as is easy to do. Because ultimately, yeah, you might be getting by the minute, but the time it gets to 31st of January and there's a tax bill due, you will have to fork out even more and you might be losing money in your property business. So how does it work moving your property into a limited company? Well, the first thing is if you have just one property, there will be taxes to pay in the vast majority of cases. So what will happen is when you transfer properties from your own name to your own limited company, because it's a connected transaction, HMRC unfortunately apply a market value principle to this. So what they mean is basically if that property is worth 200,000 pounds, but you were to say, give it or transfer it over a cost, 
HMRC will actually veto that and tax you personally as if you had sold it for the full 200 which is unfortunate because you haven't sold it for the full 200 and as a result you don't have the cash to pay any capital gains. So that's the first tax you have to contend with and the second is stamp duty. So that limited company again because it's acquiring it from you as a connected person it pays stamp duty at the full market value rate of that property the three and the five percent um, for most properties depending on where you are in the country. So they're the first two, but there are ways around them. I'm sure you've seen them previously on the YouTube channel because the whole incorporation of the property portfolio is, you know, it's, it's not, there's nothing new. And this has been around uh, for many, many years. We've done plenty of videos on it in the past, but it's just worth bringing these up because a lot of people weren't previously impacted or weren't significantly impacted. But now with the interest rates, things have changed massively. So a lot more landlords are being caught out by this. But if you've got a significant enough property portfolio for it to constitute a business, which basically means you spend at least 20 hours a week running the property portfolio, that can give rise to incorporation relief, which basically allows you to incorporate your property business without paying any tax at the minute. The capital gains gets deferred into the base cost of the shares in the new limited company. Don't worry about that. It sounds complicated. All you need to take away from that is tax free capital gains. So that side of it's sorted. And also, if you've got a bona fide partnership, so you're an LLP or a partnership with ideally previous partnership tax returns, partnership agreements, then actually there's, there's basically quirks in the rules that allow for partnership property to be incorporated with no stamp duty as well into a limited company. So providing that you've got a large enough property portfolio, at least five or so properties working 20 hours a week in it, plus it's within a partnership vehicle, then there is the potential to fully incorporate that, that property portfolio into a limited company without paying any tax whatsoever. And also the base cost of those properties gets rebased. So if the whole portfolio at the minute was worth uh, 2 million, but it cost you 1 million, well actually all of that goes into the limited company at that new 2 million market value. So when you sell those properties later on, you'll pay less tax in the limited company. And it also gives rise to potential inheritance tax planning as well, using the alphabet and the smart company structures. So there's loads of different kind of tax benefits that can come later on. But also the main thing that you'll focus on at the minute is you can get tax relief on your mortgage interest. Plain and simple as that. That's one avenue. The second, of course, as we just mentioned, is Airbnb. So a lot of people, if you've got good prime property, city centre, coastal, in areas where there's a lot of work, taking place contractors you can move your properties um, as long as of course you get permission from your mortgage lender or you refinance to an FHL mortgage you can use them as Airbnb let them out nightly and as long as you meet the conditions for this it qualifies as a furnished holiday let you can deduct all of the mortgage interest in full and even better when it comes to selling the property you can claim business asset disposal relief and pay just 10% capital gains tax on the disposal of that property even if you only used it for service accommodation for say two years and it was let out previously for 10, you can pay 10% on the full gain. So that's another fantastic benefit of changing your strategy because that's what we're here for in property. We're not just buy to let, buy to let. Actually, if you want to get through this difficult period that we're in at the minute, you need to pivot in your business. And these are some great examples of how you can change your structure or pivot your strategy short term so that you can ride through this high interest storm that we're in. Of course, there's no right and wrong answer. As with your property business, as with your circumstances, they are completely unique. So we might have said something here that doesn't apply to you or vice versa, other way around. There could be something unique about your circumstances that creates an opportunity for us to identify for you. So if anybody watching this video, if you want to book a tax planning consultation for us to run through your structure and give you our advice on how you can pay less tax and build more wealth, click the link in the comments below. I'd love to have a chat and see how it would help you guys out.